Alright guys, we're down here in Texas with our friend Jimmy Lane. He's going to take us out here. We're going to be chasing some blue cats. Um, just give us out where are we at, Jimmy? What are we looking for today? How are we going to go about it? Yeah, we're about 30 miles east of Dallas. And we're going, uh, I, we're, I'm, what I'm trying to do is do a little pre-fishing. We've got a, a, a tournament coming up next weekend. So uh, we're going, we're looking for five, five of the biggest blue cat we can catch, you know. There's some big ones out here, so hopefully we can get on some. Perfect, perfect. Well, I hope you know I'm not much of a fisherman. I'm hardly a caster. I'm pretty decent at casting, but I'm not good at catching fish. So hopefully Jimmy can turn that luck around for us today. So uh, we're going to hop on a boat, get out on the water, and we're going to start chasing some blue cats. Hey, Jimmy, I don't know what, I don't know how they do things in Texas. I don't know what operation you're running. But these are the biggest inches I've ever seen. Missouri, our Missouri inches are about half that, right? That's just, just stumps. It's just showing stumps. Yeah, see, I do all my fishing out of kayak. I, I used to do a lot of kayak fishing yeah. too. I pretty well strictly only fish for smallmouth. Oh, really? Yeah, I had two Hobies. I built a trailer and I pulled them all over the place. We, we'd run in things. When we got, uh, we got about five miles offshore. Ooh, yeah, not for me. And, and then got caught in the storm out Ooh. there. Oh man! I just run free. That was rough. Yeah. Lakes scared me. You ever run down off the coast of the Hope Let them, let them have it. These are uh, circle hooks on here. So with a circle hook, the fish actually hooks himself on there. Yeah. So you're really not, you know, you, you say y'all do some bass fishing, right? We're well, not setting the hook. Dude, you're not setting the hook. Well, you're, well, what you're gonna do when they grab it? All you're gonna do is just start reeling as hard as you can, and then you may, once you reel about five or six, you know, uh -huh. into him, once he's on there good, then you just kind of sink it up in him, and that's it. You okay. Want, you so, because if you if you get a big bite and you set that, you will, it'll pull it right out of his mouth. It won't it won't get them. Get their head up initially, or they're gonna they're gonna go under that stump, you know. So get their head up. Pull, get their head up and then and then you gotta have to kind of lay back and be a little easy on them when you can. Heck, let's see if we can get them. I'll go catch them with some shad. I'll catch gizzard shad. That's a fish we have a lot. But man, we have so much luck on this drum on the bigger fish. We'll catch smaller ones on that on that shad. It's kind of odd. So once we finally get out here and get in the water, we're going through like a whole forest of stumps. Yeah. It was, um, it was cool because that's, that's somewhere we wouldn't have fished. Oh, like, absolutely not. I, I've never taken a boat down. I, I would have, I would have never even thought about doing it, but old Jimmy Lane, man, he knows all the nooks and crannies of these catfish. So, uh, we trusted him and he took us right in there and, um, you know, dad actually was the first one on the board. Yeah. I mean, it, it was great. We bait up our hooks, threw out some uh, drum, fresh drum. And uh, we weren't there that long. Mm -hmm. I mean, in, in retrospect about it, and uh, man, all of a sudden them old pole poles is started so, showing some action, yep. and finally one of them just wham, boy, it went down, and I went over and like like uh, Mr. Lane said, I I didn't boy yank that hook, I didn't want to pull that circle hook out of the yep. mouth, so I let him go, and I just kind of set it just a tad bit, started reeling it in. And uh, had a nice representative fish. A yeah, good, a good I, catfish. I, I was happy with it. Uh, if we'd have caught ten of those suckers, I would have never batted an eye. I yeah. can promise you that. 
Yeah, I man, it was especially in January. I had uh -huh. never, I had never fished for catfish in January, and I was like, man, this is great. There you go, you got us a start. Broke the ice oh, right there. Start. Nice. So. There we go. Nice, nice, nice. Guys, I really want y'all catching this thing. Give me that camera and let y'all let y'all get home, oh. okay? You want my two folk too close no, to you? you? Good. Need some lovings. Well, guys, we got to start. Let's get us a begging in the boat now. I got some pliers. See them? See how them, them hooks do a good job. Yes, they do. Pliers oh, there's, there's some right there. Remember the old, some of the old original circle hooks, the original ones with the build ants, fancy pants, or the whisk. Um, Whisker cat, was it cat whiskers or whisker sticker? There we go. Go tell grandpa and grandpa. Let's go. Woo! So after we give that spot a little bit more action, um, we let it we let it rest a little bit and then we picked up and actually moved to shallower water yeah shallow once again something that we wouldn't have thought of we're no. not huge fishermen we're definitely not huge lake guys at all um, but I, I definitely would not have been catching and thinking to catch these catfish uh, in January all stumped up in in this shallow water maybe yeah. we just don't know what we're doing I don't know what it is but um, we were mind blown to buy it we got to learn it was awesome and we set out our hooks and actually got real slow for a second. Yeah, that was kind and, of slow for a bit. And then we, what we did was we started reeling in yeah, some poles. Yeah. And about the time we were reeling in, we see one layover. And uh, just so happened, it was right in front of me. So I grabbed it, let him take it. And once the, once the hook was set and it was comfortable, me and his cat went at it. There you go. Come right Keep on in. Keep, keep tension on it. Looks like he's swimming toward in there for a minute. Yeah, he probably is. Yeah, we'll do that. And they're going to go down. Hopefully that's a bigger fish, I hope. We'll see here in a second. That's fish. Yeah. That's fish. That's a fish. All we need to do is trick them, let them know we're moving. Good catch. Yeah. Caught up in there. That's a real one there. He served you here. So after catching that catfish, that was the biggest fish of my life. <laughs> well, that, yeah. that's the biggest catfish I've seen reeled in on a pole, I can that, tell you that. Yeah, that's what we're <laughs> saying. The first catfish, we were like, oh, that's a that's a good catfish. Yeah. You know, that's, that's, yeah. something, that's something you can pull out of rocks around here pretty easy. Um, not, nothing nothing major, but definitely definitely above average. And uh, then we pull in that sucker, and I, I was honestly kind of so shocked, I really didn't know what to say. <laughs> yeah, that, that was a big fish. Yeah, I just kind of, I was like, oh, like, I didn't <laughs> even react to it necessarily. Here we go, we're saying how big that fish is. And our guy, Jimmy Lane, is like, that's a guppy. That's yeah. a little fish. He said, we need to start getting into big fish. And I, 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 I turned around and was like, man, were you not on the boat just a couple minutes ago when I pulled in a 24-pound catfish? And no, so um, that's the crazy part is, you know, these fish down here, Jimmy Lane, he'll pull in 40, 60-pound catfish because he knows what he's doing. Nice. Aren't you supposed to do like this, Cap? Yeah. Holding <laughs> <laughs> out there on a six-foot pole. Nice. <laughs> we get one of them, uh, we get one of them beggings on, we'll, uh, Everybody done? Get, get out of your way here. Yes, sir. You don't drop them back down and then say we're going to leave again? Oh, yeah. We got <laughs> we to gotta get on them a little bit better than that. Boy, 
dois. Once again, the man, the myth, the legend, Jimmy Lane, makes a slight adjustment, moves us over to the other side of stumps, and uh, bam, paid off again. A lot of pressure on. That's a pretty good fish there. I couldn't get my camera. I was watching it bomb, but I couldn't get the camera up. <laughs> Keep him up. That's a, that's a good one there. That's a better one. God, they got her net all hung up here. There you go. There you go, that's a good job. Keep him coming. Keep him coming. He's helping me out a little bit. Right, he's, gonna, he's gonna bear down on you right here a little bit. Yeah. Keep I gotta keep him up away from them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, step up there on the front of the boat and keep him, yeah, keep him over there. Keep your rod to the Yeah, that's a good one. That's that other one probably, huh? Got Mike on? Push that button on that on that reel. Give me just a little bit of line. Here we go. Good. Yep. Yep. Woo! There we go. Good job, huh? Heck yeah. Oh shoot, maybe I was recording that whole time. Was you? It's like a really bad deco brother. Go. Oh, we could we could have got that other one a while ago with that two on. That was a big one too, that one while ago. There he is. Nice fish. Here's a Let's get a big one in the boat now. Yeah, Cap. So after Theron's last uh, big fish that he caught, uh, we, we had several playing with bait. D never fully committed, and we just couldn't couldn't set the set the hook or or put another one in the boat. Well, yeah, we just didn't know if it, maybe they were too small, maybe they weren't big enough fish, or maybe they were just playing with it and they just didn't want it necessarily. Um, but. Either way, uh, they, they, they kept us entertained for a little bit until eventually we kind of had some equipment issues, uh, some poles blown up on us and everything like that. So we had some plans for the night. We were quite a ways into the lake and we decided to just head back. Yeah. And on our way back, you know, it, that, that was the fun part because there at the end, even though we weren't catching fish, well, we were getting to talk. We were really getting old Jimmy Lane opened up to us finally and he really started, yeah. he started being himself and having a blast. And so once we pack everything up, we head back to Huckleberry's house. Um, to grab our stuff, put everything back in our truck and get ready. And because we were graciously enough invited over by Robert Baxter, which is Huckleberry's dad. Um, just an absolutely phenomenal human. And yeah, I mean, you want to tell us? You can explain what happened when we walked in the door. Man, we walked into Mr. Baxter's house and it was like the, the heavens of all types of animals all across the world had just been placed in front of us. There was gators there was mountain lions <laughs> mountain lions there was a big lion full mount uh deer um, big deer huge deer black, sables stags black bear black bear the and rhino even, yeah it's thinking rhino so um <laughs> amazing stuff just absolutely am, uh, amazing i mean this this looked like a miniature cabela's or bass pro i mean it, these mounts were beautiful and it, it just goes to show um uh, where Mr. Baxter has been. I mean, he has been fortunate enough to go on these safari hunts. Um, now, granted, you know, as he, he explained to us, th these weren't like overnight hunts. Some of these hunts took like four years. That big leopard that he killed, yeah. that, that was a four year adventure, um, adventure for him. And, uh, you know, it, it, it doesn't come easy, um, you know, but walking in and seeing his mounts and the story each one of them had to sit and listen to him explain those mounts to us was just unbelievable. Of course, we were in awe. Yeah. But we, we didn't know what to do. Nah, I, I couldn't stop. I was, I was like sensory overload, looking everywhere. Yeah. But the ultimate thing is, is all those mounts are cool, 
but what people don't see after and behind those mounts is 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 the tribes he helped out, yeah. the conservation that he helped, the the pe the the people that helped, the animals that are still out there that he has helped, he and his wife have helped, he and his family, everyone everyone that he touched, just the, this con this conservation that people don't see, and that's what they don't understand. Um, is he is a true conservationist? He is someone that that when he leaves this earth one day, he can you can genuinely say he made it a better place. He he took and he took care of God's animals, whether. You know, most people want to look at that as a bad thing because he harvests them or not. You know, it's just it's a lack of education on their part. Because I can promise you, Mr. Baxter has done more for animals and more for conservation than 99% of the people that you have met in your life. And we were gracious enough to uh, get a big old family <laughs> Texas dinner. And let oh, yeah. me tell you what, <sighs> that's some cooking right there. That was good stuff. It, it was actually hard to make that trip back to Missouri. I, we had that full belly one. Oh, Whew. bad! I I could I could have slept for the next eight hours just on the mac and cheese alone. He did. <laughs> so, um, yeah. But once again, the Baxter family I cannot say enough praise about those guys. That they, they took us in with open arms, made us feel at home, cooked us dinner, made us feel great, helped us on this trip, and we absolutely cannot wait to have them up in Missouri. Um, you know, we need to get them up here. We need to get some, get some Missouri whitetail on the ground for them. Squirrel, turkey, just absolutely yeah. everything. Um, we, we, we owe them the world, uh, and, and they genuinely deserve it. So, Absolutely. I, Great I, friends. I, I can say for a fact I've already got an envelope in my, in my bedroom that, that's got Texas written on it, and, and I'm saving up money because uh, I, I can't wait to go back. It's going to be a blast, um, especially the second time around. We're going to be more comfortable, more educated about everything. But before then, we got to get Huckleberry up here and show him how we do it in Missouri. So Huckleberry, ball's in your court now, brother. Turkey season starts here soon in April. and M Missouri Thunder Chickens. Nothing like it, I'm telling you. Nothing in the world. So um, we hope you enjoyed today's episode. Uh, we definitely enjoyed doing it, going through the process and making, creating this episode. Cannot Just cannot put into words. The, uh, the, the hunt is one thing, but the connections we made. Uh, with everyone down in Texas, we're extremely grateful for, and we just cannot wait to, to get back with them and continue to hunt and continue to be conservationists together. Yep. Friendships that last a lifetime. Thank you, Baxters. All right. And until then, keep handing out them Maniac Smacks. <laughs>